roommates. Oh my god, they were boom, real boom, names. Boom. Um, <laughs> what did that? You just um, you just triggered a memory in me with that. It's time. What's that from? It's time. It's was from that one this. of us? Our... No, is it from like Tatanoff or the radio show? All I know is that you saying it's time in a deep voice just upset me in- incredibly on a deep physical level. So thank you for that. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the hottest show on the block, Relocating Roommates. Yes, we did it. We kept it going, the alliteration and the theme, but we're taking none of the credit because this one comes from <laughs> at Jest B on Twitter. Thanks for saving the day. Because Thanks, it was um, the very last minute before we realised we didn't yeah. name the show again. Whoops. Our heads were completely empty. I think that was the thing. We were just like, we can't What's think of new? anything else. Oh, What's look, we new? We have our first listener. Hello! Someone's had Hi. their Weetabix. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. The evening Weetabix. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're awake. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's funny. It depends what time of the day. If it's 9 p.m., I feel like we're trying to slow our roll slightly. If it's me and you, I don't know if the chaotic energy levels will allow people to wind down for the evening. It'll certainly slap the day out of them. Whatever was on their mind before will have dribbled out so that their minds are empty like ours. But yeah. um, if you are listening at some point in the world where this is first thing in the morning, you are waking up and choosing violence by tuning into Dan and Phil live on stereo. So thanks for being here. For sure. Do you want me to paint a mental picture of what I look like currently? Are you asking well, I'm me? Going to. The answer is no. no. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I got this new fluffy white jumper, and I was kind mm, of happy with choice. it. But because it's the same color as my skin, it kind of looks like this is my skin, and my skin is fluffy. Does that make sense? If you're kind of blurring your eyes a bit. This is what happens when you buy clothes without consulting me first. Um, yeah. Which I understand why you wanted to rebel and do that for yourself and have a little moment. But then you bought a flesh colored jumper um, <laughs> and it's really horrible. Yeah, I don't know what hey. to say. It's re- no, it's a lovely fluffy jumper. I think it's very yeah. practical on a chilly day like today. But when you wear white, it just makes you look sick. Mm, <laughs> true. Hey, you look like fluffy Voldemort. But if that's I the think, vibe you're going for, work. I think Phil Flesh Colour for outfits mm. is going to be in for 2022. That's all I'm going to say. Um, okay, well, in that case, I'm out of everything. I'm preparing I... for a job interview tomorrow. Please help me. Yeah. Please help me. You're talking to the guy that publicly shared how he got fired twice for job interviews. <laughs> to be fair, I got the jobs. I then just lost the jobs. So, yeah. Uh, How yeah. did you get the job, Dan? And what was your interview like? Well, one of them was just so desperate that I they were like, what do you know about hardware and tools? And I was like, nothing. But can you stack a shelf? And I said, yes. And I got hired. Um, and then the other one was that supermarket that is a complete mystery. And I have yeah. not named yet. And nobody knows where I worked because no one you know, for, le- for legal reasons, I'm being super vague about the supermarket that I worked at. But that was yeah. an online form. So there was absolutely no personality for them to be turned off by. And therefore yeah. I got the job. That's good. I'd say uh, ask lots of questions. That's always a good mm. thing. Sound yeah. inquisitive. Where will I yeah. be putting the rodents? Where will I be x-raying exactly. the dogs? What's your passion in life? I just love facing up shelves. I wake up in the morning and I think I want these products to be lined in a straight line. I don't want that to be dust, and I want all the price tags to be rotated correctly. I live it. I breathe it. I will optimize yeah. it. I will research ways to improve your business as I do it. <laughs> Give me the job. That's what but I could, should have said, age 16. You could, yeah. you could fill in the blanks for shelves to the Protron Neutron Collider in your secret science lab, whatever you're doing I with love the a job. Good, I love a good Protron. Yeah. That's a hey. super rare particle. Yet to be discovered, but Phil just went there, so that's Get exciting. Get on my particle game, Daniel. Oh, we've got one Sorry. more. Hi, guys. So, hi. how's the dog situation? Oh, my God. Let it go! How's Let the Dan's emotional resilience situation? It hasn't got any better. You expect me to talk about this and 
then just like instantly get therapy and work it out? No. No. God. Speaking of emotional pet issues, though, uh, we had a whole shrimp adventure. God, that was wild. Oh, my God. Right. So we're relocating the shrimp. They're downsizing from a mansion into a slightly smaller mansion because... The tank they're in at the moment weighs about 9,000 kilograms. So when we move, we don't want to... it's like this fish tank that Norman used to live in. It weighs 120 kilograms. It's crazy. How can we move that? So, you know, fish died. Great. That means we can yeet all the shrimp delicately and carefully into a tiny shrimp-friendly bowl that that we can... Well, it's not a bowl. It's a a fully expensive tank. It's a full tank. That is smaller that we can transfer to the new place when it finally gets finished so phil was a shrimp cowboy which was hilarious and upsetting yeah so i had to catch the shrimp first of all but then i tried to carry them across the room in a bowl to get into the new tank and if you've got a mental image of how chaotic that was your mental image is correct because (laughs) it was very stressful (laughs) whatever bizarre dan and phil comedy sketch scenario absolute clown show you're imagining that's exactly what happened however all the shrimp were fine, and now they're vibing in their new house. So uh, Phil could have almost killed multiple organisms, including me, but you didn't. So well done, Phil. Thank you. I, I think Big it was a success. Coordination. They seem very happy as well. They've been scooting around the new tank. It's quite fun to watch them settle in and see what's going on in there. Scooting and booting, yeah. Uh, and sure. also, on the subject of our house and whether we're actually ever going to move into it, we went to visit it the other day, and there was a mystery hole. Yeah. No one wants a mystery Just, uh, hole. Mystery hole. We were like, hi, what's that big hole in the wall? And do you know what the builder said? I don't know. Mm. What do you mean? You don't know. Like, well, didn't <laughs> you want it here? No, we didn't. What's it for? Well, it has cables in it. Okay, why? Well, we don't know. Who knows then? We don't Who know. Knows? Why is there a hole in the wall? And we're like, can we fill the hole in the wall? And they're like, I don't know. What if it's for something important? You tell us! <laughs> Um, so um yeah free glory hole i guess yeah maybe that maybe do you know my grandma used to call (laughs) uh, what's this segue no she used to she used to call like (laughs) a a little area in her house where she stores all her stuff a little glory hole um (laughs) what that's what she said. Anyway, okay, she's... Well, this, that, that, that must be the actual innocent definition. No, I think that that's the what it is. is. Ruined just like everything else in society. So well done, anyway, Phil's grandma. And she, anyway, this is why we need homophobia. She, she said it when we were in the dining room and we were all sat around yep. at the dinner table. And she was like, oh, I've what just... What did she I've say? Just, she said, I've just been filling up my glory hole. And me and my brother... Oh, God. Spat, we spat our drinks out. Oh, we were like, oh. geez. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and my mum was, my mum was like, what? what? What are you saying? I was like, never mind. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Jesus. So, if welcome you're... to... <laughs> <laughs> no, you go on. I was just going to say, if if you are in as in the dark as much as my grandma, just don't look it up. You're fine. It's all, it's all good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, welcome to relocating roommates with Dan and Phil. You are making the correct choice, clearly, with how to spend your Tuesday. Thank you oh, for yeah. continuing to hang out with us as we have nothing to do and nowhere to do it until mm. we are not not homeless. So today is Tuesday, and every Tuesday I have an agenda. Ooh. What's the agenda, yeah. Dan? The, Dan? the thing that gender. I want to talk about today. Are you, stop, we don't need to. I'm Dan Gender. Yeah, that's my. Yeah. There we go. Formless blob. I'm actually Dan Gender. We did it. Yes. What I want to talk about today is the fact that as an adult, I am a dumb bitch. Yes, you are. That, that's I don't see. I'm constantly surprised at the things I don't understand about how to function and not to call shade to the education system or my family. But I am an idiot that is completely unprepared for life. Granted, Phil, I feel like as two weird nerds, we've managed to kind of fail in a good direction accidentally yeah. when it comes to being adults. But do you ever just feel like you don't understand anything? And when you were 18, you were just plopped into university or wherever the hell you do. And you're just like, well, I actually know nothing because that's me. And I still feel like that now. Yeah, I still feel like that. I feel like there's so much they don't teach you. So is that going to be the topic of conversation? Because I can change it now as you explain what you want people to submit. I want people to send in, what should they teach you at school? Do you feel like either 
there is something that ain't on the curriculum that should be curriculum. To make us all... <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> fuck you. Sorry, the reason what the reason <laughs> the reason this is funny is because I got absolutely roasted in front of all of our friends once. Um, yeah. Right, as far as curriculum, it's not curriculum, but like circumference, circumvent, circum freaking size, everything circ circumstance. Oh, but it's <laughs> curriculum. Thanks, English. That makes no sense. Who here wants to abolish English? Me. Thank you very much. Yes, I pronounced that wrong. But much like GIF and Dog, I think I'm right and actually anyone else is wrong. But I am actually wrong. So anyway, what do you think they should teach you in school, either to prepare you for life or to just make all of humanity better? So instead of wasting our time talking about boring crap, we can talk about the real stuff like this. Example, when I was at school, they had these things called PSHE lessons for like half an hour in the morning in our form class. So they weren't proper classes. They're just the thing that you do after registration in the morning. I don't know what it stands yes. for. It's like politics, society, health and eggs or something. Um, and <laughs> it was a complete piss take. People just didn't listen. People just screaming, throwing crayons at each other, pooing on the yeah. walls, polishing their knives. And no one learned about anything. I'm aware that they tried to teach us about stuff. But I'm like, why do we fully spend six hours a week learning X, Y, Z? And then as an adult right now, I do not know how to function on any level. 100%. Yeah, I completely know what you mean. Like, my example would be laundry. I have no, I I had no (laughs) idea how to, there should be, honestly, there should be an ironing class. There should be a home class. Well, no, just ironing. I went to that first job. Oh, you want a full ironing course? I want a full ironing. Okay, sure. I went to that first job interview at Shmubble U Schmach Schmish. And yeah, we'll I didn't know, I didn't know how to iron the shirt. I went with the creasiest shirt ever and a big iron burn on my hand because that's Creasy the first time I properly tried to iron something. So that's one of the things that they should teach you. Anyway, we, we've got our well, first one here. Oh, let's listen. Here we go. Hi. Well, that's encour- encouraging because I'm there right now. I'm 18 and I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> 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 you're so screwed um, oh no, no you'll be fine if you ever think Dan and Phil they're so dumb but we're still alive so you might be okay you know what I mean yeah you might yeah. be fine you might I'm be sure. fine you'll tread water probably yeah well have you got any other examples Dan of your well, failures well following your life? one do you remember my laundromat crisis when I went to university oh right? yes so <laughs> my family did not have like a washer dryer and I did not understand laundry. My family, uh, they just did not prepare me for life in many ways. I knew how to mop, but I did not know how to work this thing. I actually didn't understand how the process of washing and drying clothes really works because I just had a clothes hanger in my garden. So we get to university. I've worn all my clothes for two weeks. I walk into the communal laundromat, which, you know, social anxiety wise is scary. Imagine all of these students just collaging it up, just stood yeah. there doing the drugs, making the outs with each other, just sitting with this laundromat. I walk in, bumbling nerd, like, how do I do this? I put a pound in the machine, open it, put my clothes in, and then I just don't know what to do. And I push all the buttons, (laughs) and it doesn't turn on. And then people start staring at me, because it's been like five minutes, and I'm just like looking really visibly lost, trying to mash buttons on this thing. And then I take everything out. People stare at me and they're like, why did this guy just remove all his washing? I go home, have an existential crisis for like two hours in the middle of the night. I get a taxi to Phil's apartment and I just asked Phil to wash my clothes. Yeah. I was like, there's only so many buttons. How could you not make it switch on? He was like, I don't well, know you, what I'm doing. You, <laughs> you were like, I don't understand why this is an issue. And I was like, but I'd like, it's not a simple issue of using a machine. I've had a whole mental breakdown. I'm spiraling. I'm very emotional. And I just need to use your freaking Bosch right now. Can you just yeah. wash my freaking trousers? And Phil was like, okay, this guy is having a meltdown. This is very I normal. Yeah. yeah. Bish bash Bosch. Um, the laundry was so bad pressing that button you actually just released soil into the drum at university that's how wrong you press those buttons 
Uh, probably, yes. Oh, yeah. I have another one. I'm 19, and I'm scared I'm going to go to jail because I still don't know how to do my taxes. Oh, oh my God. Oh. I, no one ever where knows. Like, when you're 18, you're 19, whenever. Whenever you get your first job, there's a point where you're like, am I supposed to do something? <laughs> and you only find out when the government sends you this aggressive that's like you're gonna jail bitch and i'm like oh my god i don't want to do you want a pro tip i would say get an accountant there are cheap accountants there are online accounting services there are apps you can try and learn and struggle everything yourself but it's not worth doing wrong and i remember me and phil we tried to do it ourselves for a couple years and we probably wasted loads of money because we were just being idiots and then we made the choice to not be an idiot but yeah god why don't they tell you it's so hard why didn't my parents tell me anything? Yeah. And the, <laughs> the, the, why, but also, I'm not going to just put this on the school as well, because the form you yeah. have to fill out for taxes is like, have you ever not not filled out form 1C not, in not the residence of yeah. L? I'm like, what? I don't know what any of these words mean. How do you expect me to understand this? It's- That is a good one. Um, let's hear another one. They should teach us how to grocery shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was me as well. Oh, oh Dan. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm, just, I don't want to throw Dan under the bus. My breakdowns. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I tell them about the, the lettuce? Yeah, go on, you tell it yeah. dramatically. That, I was like, okay. We're gonna make a salad. We're gonna do it. We're not gonna get a takeaway. This oh, was before this de- one. Stop exposing me. Th- this was before delivery days. I was like, I know how to make a salad. I can do it. I just don't have a lettuce. So Dan, can you go get a lettuce, please? <laughs> so he goes to the shop. He comes back with a cabbage. Uh, <laughs> a massive raw a cabbage. cabbage. Oh. And Phil's expecting a freshly washed iceberg lettuce ready to make a salad with. And I just give him this raw <laughs> cabbage the size of a pumpkin. And he's I was like, like, do you know? Who are you? What are you good for? Oh, do, oh man. Do you know what this is? Yeah, we didn't have a cabbage salad. I think we just had some toast We didn't have a, a raw something. cabbage salad. On the no. second day of university, and I've told this before, but this is just good representation for people. Me and all the people I was forced to live with went to the local uh, store that I will not name in case it happens to have any relation to the store that I got they fired from. Um, <laughs> and we were searching for groceries. And in my mind, I was like, yep, yep, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. I remember I picked up some pasta and then I walked down an aisle and I picked up some lettuce. And then I had a big realization all at once that I don't actually know how to keep myself alive. I don't know what I'm supposed (laughs) to buy to feed myself, what products I might need to clean myself, or just other things. And I cried in the cheese aisle. I just, I silently wept looking at some yogurt. And I phoned my (laughs) grandma and I was like, how do I cook? And she was like, okay, um, just buy some ready meals and I'm sure everything will work out fine. And so I did. And let me tell you right now, you can live off Sainsbury's value ramen noodles and bread quite well. Yeah. Because you, you walk into their little, you know, mini shops and they got the bread. 20p for a loaf. Man cannot live on bread alone. Try it. Try doing it. Um, that, mm. That's good. I, I'm, I'm glad you got over that. And you can make a few things now. So you're not completely useless uh, all these years later. Although I think we could have been better if we'd have had some teaching because there is home economics at school and i did have like a cooking class but that was like we want 40 students to learn how to make cheese on toast and yeah. there is there is two ovens and it's and it's, it was just like how are we meant to do anything with it's this? not the I way to do it we had no. that like home ec and it, it was a joke class it was a meme we made like a picnic yeah. once and then an omelet <laughs> and that was it like they should make you sit down with a goddamn textbook for six years and be like this is a lentil. This is how to boil it. This is how to cook. This is how to work an oven without setting your house on fire or gassing yourself. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
I had a lovely time for a couple afternoons making fingerless sandwiches for some freaking reason. But I didn't learn <laughs> anything about cooking. And I wasn't taught anything about cooking from my family. Oh, man. No. Oh, man. Um, and there were some classes. This is going to make me sound old. But there was a class <laughs> at my school. There was a class at my class. Sc- the, yeah, no. There was a class at my school called Pneumatics, right? And they might have it still at what? some people's schools. Where the classroom was full of air pipes. And you had to connect <laughs> to different... <laughs> And you had Bills to connect of different Victorian era steampunk education. No, okay. It, it was literally like steampunk class. So there's all these air pipes, and the class was that you had to reconnect different pipes to make the air flow in what? different directions. Why is every story from your childhood sound like a complete <laughs> lie? It's Why real. Is, ev- is, is up north real? Is your childhood it is real? real? Is any story. Oh my God. What, what anyway. is happening? There was lots of urban Connect legends. Connect the pipes, Phil. Yeah, there was the first urban legend that if... It might have been true. If you put one of the pipes against your skin, then an air bubble would go into your bloodstream and go to your heart. So everyone was like, oh, oh don't do yeah. it. Yeah. And another one that was that one of the teachers once put one of the things up their ass and it made them explode. I don't think either of those was true, <laughs> but it was, it was an urban legend. Um... The urban legend of the exploding ass teacher. Yeah, I was like, if that <laughs> happened, I'm sure we wouldn't be still in this room doing pipe school. <laughs> right? The, honey, this would be a crime scene. <laughs> the walls would need to be reupholstered. I, I don't know what to tell you. That, why are there always so many dumb urban legends? In my DT class, they were just like, here's a, here's a saw... Um, yeah, once someone just killed another person, they just like went crazy and just like killed another person. Or the Bunsen yeah. burners, they're like, yeah, someone like set themselves on fire and yeah. then died. Or there's always the teacher that goes, are you rocking on your chair? I once saw someone rock on a chair and then they died. Which, to be fair, is true. If you yeah. rock on a chair and trip and bang your head, you can die. But teachers love to tell you that death is around every corner for they no do. reason. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's hear another one from one of you guys. They yeah, need to teach sign language in schools. Uh, U.S. needs ASL in schools. I don't know what the other countries is, but sign language, please. Absolutely. Why not? That is a, such. It's not only just a good idea. It seems like it should be an obvious idea, right? Yeah, for sure. That would be amazing if they did that. Um, I mean, it's so helpful not just to be inclusive for other people, but just as a life skill in general. I mean, it's just wild. I mean, no offense to German. I do remember quite a lot of German. But it it wouldn't be nice to learn sign language. I would keep the German. I would just remove, like, how how, uh, an oxbow lake is formed in a river. You're going to remove geography. Wow. Not geography, just... People, places, things, and nature is quaking. Just maybe the river. It's not earthquaking, because you just cancelled that. True. That was was Mm. also good. Um, also, so, we have to give a on. shout out to our live transcription happening. Yes, thank you to Louisa, who is currently transcribing the show. Um, live. We put, li- we put a link in the description for anyone that wants a bit of transcription action. We're just testing it out. And I really have to apologize categorically to anyone who has to either transcribe anything I say or to just read it with their eyeballs. It's bad enough to listen to it live. But the idea that someone yeah. has to interpret my foul nonsense voice or even just see it on a page is really a crime against humanity. So there's that. I'm already, I'm right. already feeling bad, bad about the, <laughs> the, the story I told about my pneumatics oh, class. Oh, God. I was thinking more about your grandma, actually. Um, but oh, sure, let's get late. one more on the topic of why we're all dumb. How to go to the um, mechanic without feeling like you want to throw up because you know nothing about cars. <laughs> I have never yeah. felt gayer in my life than a time where I had to go <laughs> into a car garage and just be like, uh, my car slow down and I don't know why. And yeah. I just felt so helpless. Again, is this something that my dad should have done? Or is it something Maybe. that the school should have taught mom. me? All that, yeah, all my mum. Yeah, I'm just talking about my actual parents, uh, which it turns yes. out neither of which knew anything to tell me. But yeah, mm. I am a hundred percent with you. That was awful. It turns out I just run out of gas. Yeah, just run, um, out, run out of it. 
I just I just run out of gas, and they looked at me like I was the stupidest person that I'd ever seen in their life. And they're like, what? "How can't you tell? You've run out of gas." And I was like, "Oh, because the meter has still got a stick in it." And they were like, "Oh yeah, your gas meter is like fully broken. It's like fifty percent broken. So you've been running on the, the the verge of just coming to a full stop on the motorway at a hundred miles an hour uh, for about a year." And I'm like, "Cool. Wow. Very nice. Mm. That's great. It's crazy to Fantastic. me that they learn how to." to drive in american schools like drivers ed um they wouldn't trust uk teens behind cars i don't think i'm just speaking for myself when i was 15 i had one brain cell objectively yeah. you might be 15 listening to this and i genuinely think the average people these days are smarter that might just be because there's social media and people have conversations and they learn themselves and they get smarter and the world's a better place but yeah i think objectively as a 15 year old i was just very dumb and just had bad motor skills <laughs> <laughs> and the idea yeah. of me driving no uh yeah. no mm. Mm. that was fun I, f- I feel like we could have continued that topic for the rest of time and would have created the ultimate my hero academia school um, we'd have just successfully so, yeah. reshaped all of society for sure so thank you that that was epic and it's good to know it's not just me <laughs> and to any of Thanks the younger people listening to any of the teens or the young adults now people and yet yeah, one it's not just you and two uh yeah there's untold horrors in life waiting to ambush you mm. for sure look forward to for them. sure so i'd like to Absolutely. segue now into a new story that i read <laughs> and it's gonna be <laughs> phil can i just say quickly app- why have every yeah. show we've ever done live radio youtube yeah always has a news segment do you just want to be a newscaster i feel like i could be a newscaster and i just like Mm. the topic of unusual news in the world i think the tv (laughs) news i think the tv news doesn't cover the weird stuff enough and i really think this should be its own section so we're doing that job for you anyway today we're going to be talking about (laughs) what yeah I'm going to get the question in now so you can think about it. What okay, will typing and twen- talking. What will 2071 be like? Just tell us what you think. What's going to be going on? What will be We're there? The water. Yeah, exactly. That could be one that and you submit great, and will enjoy. Great, great granddaughter will not be alive because of climate change. Oh my god. That's what they should have sung in this <laughs> <laughs> that would have been uh, a wait. much worse song for Busted, and I don't think the Jonas Brothers would have covered it. No. What will 2071 be like? And I'm asking you that question because in the news, in 1969, <laughs> a oh, lady 69. called. Oh, nice. A lady called <laughs> Rosa Beckerton found a letter in her. <laughs> Glory hole. Glory. <laughs> I didn't want to say. <laughs> she found a letter. Where did her... she find it? Why is this so I don't tense? know. It just said she found a letter. I'm trying to add a bit of spice. I don't know where she found it. It might have you been in her sock. You're the first white person to overspice something, Phil. Spiced. Okay, fine. Listen. She had a letter. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. Inside the letter was a letter from herself in 1969 Ooh. which described what she thought the future would be like today oh okay? my god okay yeah what did she predict listen to what she said she said i'm ready mm-hmm. the telephone right now is a square box thing with the receiver on yep. top of it but yep. now we're in the future <gasps> it won't <gasps> be a telephone anymore you'll be able to see the people you are talking to for there is a screen oh, where you can see the people God. and it will be like a television. Queen invented FaceTime, can you believe? That's, that's or Zoom. Good. That's great. Because it else? was multiple people. That was the main prediction that they got right. And I that blew my mind. because I was like, they predicted Zoom. They should have invented it, put a pa- pattern down. They could be Steve Jobs right now. Exactly. The other thing. Get, get on that time traveling stonk or, game. Or they could be Apple right now. But she also <laughs> said, <What> the- <laughs> all- "No, she also said all food would be." C- <laughs> Stop laughing! You make me laugh. She said all food would be consumed. <laughs> Do you need glasses? 
Why I know. Read? Why does I'm it reading take it. So long to say. I'm Are you kinda, all right? Just, Do I need I'm to fine. call the doctor? What no. is happening? Spit it out. Listen. She said all food would be consumed. Listen, like- what was I doing before? We're all listening. You got eight thousand people listening. Speak. They want to know. All food will be consumed like chewing gum that you chew and then swallow, so it will be smaller. Mm. That she got wrong. Well, it's I don't know. Gross. There's loads of weird, you know that. There's loads of like weird diet workout pastes that are like have your three meals a day in the form of this gray sludge. So the technology, oh, yeah. there, it's just that we enjoy textures in our mouths. I don't want fries in the form of a tiny chewing gum. I want you to want chew them in on the that form fry. of a crispy carbohydrate rectangle in it. Yeah. yeah so let's I'm see what you. you think. Here we go. Hi. First one. They don't get um climate change under control. I don't think there will be a 2071. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you said it. You said I it. I think that's I yeah. think that's true. We are headed towards mm. the inevitable geostorm or whatever that movie yeah. was. It, it's coming. I mean, and as it's soon all as of COVID's over. Like, I, I understand that we need a moment to be like, oh, good, everyone's vaccinated, COVID, that was a thing. The, like, the, there's several issues, you know, on the table that, we, you know, society need to address. The globally, climate change, you kind of need to do something. Otherwise, we are all literally going to be on fire and not just yeah. not me. Exactly. And the pun won't even be good anymore if we're all on fire. Exactly. Next one. I think in 2071, robots will be a sexuality, like an accepted sexuality. Heck yeah. Mm, so you're saying definitely. that having sex with a robot it will just be accepted as like this is Or just is a my... preference. Oh, mm. just a preference. Uh, yeah. So, I, I so what are you robots. into? And it's like, I'm into robots exclusively, which when you think about how ah. garbage humans are, um, in many ways, emotionally... And even physically capably, I can see that happening. Yeah. Are and we, I'm actually picture- I'm gonna sign up for that. Go on. You yeah. What are, are we, we picturing? picturing a robot that looks like a person? So it's like it might as well be a person, which is I think what they're trying to get to at the moment with these like weird sex robots. Or, or just Henry the Hoover. Yeah, are you say <laughs> are you saying that like the T T one thousand The Dyson fan with googly eyes? That kind of robot would be a sexuality. Like either way, that's an interesting thought. I guess I if you, that, yes, I was just going to say. I guess if you did go with a robot, they'd have extra mm. features, wouldn't they? In fifty years, you could like press a button; they'd do all sorts of things. Thanks for that, <laughs> Phil. Yeah, no, I I agree fully, and I also think that as society becomes less kink shaming, that yeah. this won't even be a conversation by then. So I look forward to um, replacing all pleasure. With a USB yeah. stick. Yesterday, Hi. I was thinking about how we're going to have 7G. And because of that, <laughs> everyone is going to be born with, like, and like like Shrek ogre antenna <laughs> things. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was All like, fine. Wh- where are you going with Shrek? But then, yes, absolutely. Receivers. We will be. Internet straight into my eyes. I mean, we like. We will be the 7G. Our, our phones are basically that already because as soon as I put it down, I feel like I've lost some kind of vital organ and I panic. Yeah. Where's my baby? Oh, it's here. It's back. I'm connected to the universe again. Yeah. Mm. I think that when the internet is so instantly fast that there's no loading ever again and we've all got yeah. like Siri in our heads, uh, it'll just be like Wally, where we're all just big potato people being foie gras fed uh, entertainment and also space age chewing gum slime. And that sounds all right. Yeah. The the, the, weird, the funniest thing about technology is it changes so subtly. You don't notice that we're suddenly in the future with an iPhone. One day when you, when, you're doing so, your yeah. Victorian pneumatic steam class. Yes. And then suddenly people are calling you a boomer Karen on Instagram. That's the Life thing. Life comes you, at you. Yeah. You don't, you don't see it. So I think in 50 years, we won't have really noticed that we're all floating around on our hover boards or whatever, because it's going to be a, a subtle introduction to our lives. Mm. Yeah, that was quite deep. Next one. Well, they just taught spinach how to send emails. So I feel <laughs> like in the future, that we'll be having conversations with spinach. We'll just be taken over by spinach. 
<laughs> I love that that's specifically spinach. Like Wait. no other plant or vegetable spinach. Is Newt Newt sixty nine two forty telling the truth about this Wi Fi spinach? Or is this a prank? <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you believe it? Also, I'm... is Newt Newt 2469 420 Blazer a Pingu Stan account? No, no, no. So. no. And I'm going to say this for the record Pingu's a little shit. And yeah. He's checked his mum and stopped being such a little bitch because he really was. He was. I I'm, found Ping- I'm going to have I a public him... beef with Pingu. I think you're going to get atted by Pingu. I found it quite stressful yeah. to watch. I found it really, really stressful because they were just like Such peeing all over the floor. I know. Yeah. What the hell? Stop peeing God. on the floor, Pingu. Go, um, get your life together, Pingu. Spinach. So, what's your prediction, Dan? What do you think will happen in fifty years? I have this thing which I'm going to patent and I'm going to call it Dan's Global Extremity Theory, which is that thanks to the pace of technology and also society and culture developing, thanks to the information age, that everything is going to accelerate positively and negatively at the same time. As we've seen in recent politics, everything can be quite unprecedentedly terrible quite quickly. However, also in the political (sighs) sense, when we look at the discourse on social media and how all of us have just become so much better people. We're learning things. We're educating each other. We're having conversations that should have had 200 years ago. And all of us are just growing and becoming much better people. The world is becoming exceptionally better and kinder and more inclusive at an alarming rate. These two forces are going to go in a V. So Mm. as opposed to humanity slowly trickling, we're going to end up in this kind of inevitable war between good or evil that at some point very soon will become a Black Mirror episode and then will either be Wally or some kind of dystopian horror movie. Wow. So you just said all that and it was so deep. And I was just going to say, you're going to be able to record your dreams. <laughs> and now That's I feel an like... an example of creepy Black Mirror shit. <laughs> That's horrible. I, dream about some... I don't want to see my fish dying 400 times a week, do I? No, I like that you're dreaming no. about that. And I I dreamt that was there was eight new fish in the tank last night, which was you quite had a happy. fish dream. Yeah. Guys, stop telling us to get a dog. We're still having fish. What did you have a dream about? I dreamt. I think it was because of the shrimp relocation drama. But Isn't I it? dreamt. I dreamt that there was eight new fish, and they were like fluorescent purple. And wow, it, I was like, wow, they're really pretty. But then you were like, we need to get eight separate tanks for each fish because they're better fish. Uh, would, yeah. So then we were looking for tanks, and then I woke up. So it was, it was kind of, a, it was all right. Yeah. What does that mean emotionally for both of us? I think that means just, that much like my theory, we are on a V path, and we're fundamentally diverging away from each other. Phil, it seems yeah. like I'm in an emotional direction where I need to go live in a remote cabin and work out my emotional abandonment issues, while you are clearly ready to adopt seven hundred horny hamsters yeah and just breathe them on the reg and walk around in a trench coat made of living hamsters actively breeding with each other shuffling okay. to people on the sly like a man with some stolen rolexes except with slightly pea-soaked <laughs> hamsters actively humping each other and multiplying every five minutes but finally <laughs> you found your calling phil the hamster breeder you have reached peak authenticity. It's your final form. And even though climate change and the technology singularity is threatening to destroy the world, you found ultimate happiness. And that's the future. Wow. I, like, I don't think I can beat that. I think you predicted it completely correctly. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that was, that was beautiful. Um, let's get one more from the audience to get rid of okay. my disturbed feeling. Hi. Honestly, I'm expecting us to be living in some kind of dystopian universe um kind of like the hunger (laughs) games or something with the way the world is going at the moment oh okay well here's izzy just fully (laughs) backing me up 
but for the purpose of hope, I will say, look at the good things, be the change you want to see in the world. Look at all the movement, look at all the growth, look at all the learning, look at young people engaging and in, getting involved in politics, being artists, expressing themselves, living their dreams and think you can do that. You have the power, you can manifest your own destiny and we can make everything happy and lovely. And I'm sure that's what's going to happen. Wow, Dan, that was emotional i think that's enough of the future i th- i want to end on that positive note from you i think that's that was a good one i had a game based on another pun of my name do you remember when we did what would dan ban yes i got thinking clearly not very hard and i want to do dan the businessman where people <laughs> right now in about six seconds or less try to pitch me an amazing idea for a business and i'll decide whether it's a goer or not go you're in the elevator and it's time to work the shaft A business idea. I think that should be the only option in fashion. So I yeah. accept your idea. However, I want to technically kind of enforce it like an evil dictator upon the world. So, so you're going to you, you remove pass. all colour. You pass, yeah. So go on, Phil. One. Okay, here we go. It is a sock detector. So Ooh. it's each sock mm. has a tiny mm. little like SIM Microchip. card. But it's made of wool. And then you know on your app on your phone where each yeah. sock is. And that I can be. In. Thank you. <laughs> and that can be replaced with any item of clothing because it's a stitch. No, 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 no. SD it's just, card. You, you have taken the, the liberty and the initiative to invent wool based electronics purely yes. for this one product and it only finds socks. And simply based on that, I am in, Phil. Well done. That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Your mind. All the cash. It's a nose sock company, and they're little <gasps> socks that you put over your nose that keep you oh. warm in the winter. I love oh, that. Oh, I love a nose I love sock. That. I, need I need that, that right my, now. My nose gets so cold, and I don't like scarves. Although it's quite helpful. The one of the upsides of wearing a mask outside during COVID times is. Mm. Your nose nose is nice and protected. But when we no longer have to obscure our mouths, it would be nice to just have like an elephant trunk of fluffy patterned yarn hanging off our face. And if we're all looking slightly like elephants, strangely phallic energy, but very practical and another opportunity to express oneself. I'm in. Hey, yeah. When uh, COVID goes away, people might not want to be still shaking hands. So you can use your a woolly elephant trunk and just tap it against somebody else's like a high five. So as opposed to wearing gloves, you think people should slap their nose socks together? Yes, I would like to do that. Okay, thank you, Phil. All right, so we're going to make microwaves that you put water into and you press a button and it'll make food appear out of thin air. Let's do this, bitch. That, okay, <laughs> firstly, I don't care what this is based on. I like your energy. You're hired. We yeah. need that energy. I don't care if this is a completely disastrous idea that has no basis in science. We're going to do it. We're going to fire festival this. We're going to take all their money and we're not going to give them anything to drink. Hey, can we I put all the water in the microwave? What? Can, can I add another feature to that microwave? What if you could press a button and it made things cold? I know that's yep. a fridge, but what if it's like a fast fridge? That is the number one invention that life needs. Why can we heat things up and we can't freeze things? Come on, guys, fast. just do a reverse microwave. 
Yeah. Come on. I, that's what I need. Exactly. Cactus dildo, cactus dildo, cactus dildo. <laughs> Was there a bird in the background okay, at the end of that agreeing bye. with you? What? Bye. I've had a lovely evening. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, I'm I really want, glad no, I came up with this I damn this business one, man. This, we need one more to replace what, that. What was that noise? Are you are you being chaotic? Are you being it was a, chaotic on Dan and live stream? It was a bird. Do you have a parakeet just mouthing off in the background? Did a parakeet send that? Is I that some word salad? It. Did a hyper intelligent crow just cross the street, mug someone, pick up their phone, and just go? Ah! I think they did. I kind of enjoyed it, though. That's... Okay, palate cleanser. I'm not going to acknowledge Phil or the previous question. A library that is also a cafe and a bakery. Ooh. Oh, oh isn't that's, that just that's the, more wholesome. The, the soul massage you needed after that nightmare. Let's yeah. all just pick picture that we're in the book cafe. They've just baked oh. some bread. We've got our yeah. favourite story on the go. It's getting yeah. to a good bit. And then they bring yep. you just a, a warm latte and a slice of toast oh. and, and give you a little pat on the head and go, keep on reading, Buster. And this is why governments need to fund and support public libraries for all the good they do for the community as a social space, a place of learning, and just to give them warm loaves. Because if Dan, the confused and scared student crying into his Sainsbury's baguette, will tell you... Bread is love, bread is life, and together we will find a way into the future. World peace. Yeah. Well, this has been a really fun show. I've enjoyed that. All was your Tuesday with Dan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to Thursday, which is a game night with Phil, which I think will be perhaps the complete opposite of this experience in an amazing way to help get you through the week. You know what the reason why I like Tuesday and Thursdays is because it's yeah. like Monday, oh God, and then it's a little something, and then it's Wednesday, and then it's like Thursday, okay, there's a little something, and then it's Friday, and you've got the Friday feeling. You know what I mean? I'm liking yeah. it. I'm well, liking to anyone it. that is new that has just stumbled across stereo, make sure to give both of our accounts a follow because then you'll get a little ding when we go live next if you forgot. And you don't want to miss nice. the start. Who knows what the hell's going to come out of our mouths? And also, yeah. If you follow until we move house, we are going to give away the stuff that we can't give away to people that don't want it. And you could win things such as a cube. He finally did. You finally did it after yeah. after after like five shows. You did it. Yes. So thank you. Follow us. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. I hope you have a chill Wednesday. Hope that everything you want happens for you. And Phil. What would you like to say to get people excited for Thursday? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>